Hey everybody, welcome to episode number four of the 6x6 podcast. I am I7, joined as always by Matt Mister and this week's special guest, Possum. Introduce yourself. What's up? I'm Possum on the content team here at CR6, ready to talk some power rankings. Yeah, that's what we're going to be doing this week. Power rankings are back, but first, uh, we've got one topic before that. It's going to be the event that began today. Today is April Fool's Day. And uh, Ubisoft <laughs> had a special surprise for us. Um, they gloriously granted us Tachanka with a unicorn. He, and, and then Monty in his shield. Blackbeard is all pinked out. I am loving the colors that they put into this. You know, of I all love the fact. I love the fact that it's in kids' bedroom and they're all miniature. That, that's, I, that's hilarious. That, that yeah. sold me. It, it's not, not even the fact that it's plain. It's just that it's miniaturized inside of the kids' bedroom. It, there's nothing better that could have they could have done for me with yeah. that. Honestly, of all the corporate hype surrounding April Fool's Day, I'm glad this happened. This is one that I'm actually happy about. Mm. And know? they even leaked that the fact that they would be doing these type of skins, and no one believed them. <laughs> no one believed them. They were like Tachanka unicorn, Blackbeard. Yeah. Pink? Monty? He plays it pretty straight, you know? Besides that one, you know, Tachanka, what was it? His, his, the church thing they did with him? The, the priest, oh, yeah, where he was yeah, the, the Lord, Lord Tachanka. Besides that, that was a they, great one. they play it pretty straight most of the time, so this is a nice... I, I, they, they've honestly, they've, they've kind of more gathered themselves into it, and they're just like, you know, we know the community likes a good meme. Let's give it to them. And they were like, we're going all out with this event. Yeah. And the fact that they, I mean, like they had to recolor so, some of it, even retexture. Like they redid the hostage completely. The hostage it, is my it, favorite part. The hostage, the hostage is my so favorite funny. part too. It's like, look, just look at that that bear gonna, suit. It's like, oh my god. Yeah, we're gonna, um, I think, give Vix some some pictures and just cover the she, screen. She'll, in, she'll help provide it. We don't, you yeah. don't need to see our faces for this. This is much more important. Yeah. So you a hostage in a bear suit. And I, I'm sure like, this is life. By the time you hear this podcast, most of you will have played the event um, and know what's going on, but um, it'll probably be old news. Yeah. So, so so Ubisoft remade like the plane map out of just neon colors. Everything's neon, but the it's, rainbow colors. The idea is that it's a toy in kids bedroom of house so the whole map is in kids bedroom like the skybox is kids bedroom and then it, you're just shrunken down to floor. fit yeah <laughs> I'm so excited to play it, it's really trippy like when you're outside of the plane it's so trippy to be like you just be like aware it's time of the to read space. Force. right like you're aware <laughs> you're aware of the space that you're used to and your it's character meta. model looks the same on your screen, but it just really messes with those, like, all of a sudden the ceiling is way above you because you're not actually in the bedroom map. You're in plane, and it, this, it's this really... This is the Halloween stupid. event we deserve but didn't yes. get. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. The Halloween event was basically just a darkened map, and it wasn't fun to play at all. It was, it just was, it was extremely like, oh, hard to play because it was, it was very one-sided. Yeah, it's it, like... On certain cases, and then it was just... I feel like... It was a great idea, but I wish they would have just made it like nighttime and then decorated it and just left yeah. the lighting the same. That was Everyone would have still played it. That was one of those things that was, you know, fun in concept, not really in practice. May maybe if they went ahead and made it like maybe they were trying out a new weather system where they wanted to go be like, hey, it's raining. It's Halloween. Look at house. It's beautiful. It's nighttime. Enjoy it. But this that's what I would have wished. This is good. This is going to stimulate competitive players and casual players because it's not going to turn competitive players away like the house. Oh, yeah, they're going to love this. They're going to oh, yeah. like embrace it. They're like, my stream is lit today. <laughs> it is pink. It's blue. It's it's like everything I've ever wanted. And I don't get to get called a baby because I like it. Yeah, streamers <laughs> can play this without having to worry about because the house mode was just so dark. You oh know, yeah, that, it, it was just everyone like, was like, "How are you playing just, this? Why are you playing this?" And you're just like, "I need my." Skin. It wasn't good viewership. It wasn't fun to play, and it wasn't fun to watch on stream either. So, you know, at least this is going to be good. It's going to satisfy casual and competitive people. It's going to be good for streamers. It's good for the game in general. Can can we get game modes that were like Outbreak but better? <laughs> Outbreak was amazing. I thought Outbreak. Outbreak was I I loved Outbreak, but there was it was kind of like I was like. 
kind of like why is this the topic whereas we could have had like you know this is the situation kind of similar like what they have with the white mask and they would have done like oh there's a mission that we have to go on like that and this is more or less because i've read the book for tom clancy's rainbow six but like Mm -hmm. bank the bank map is based on the very first mission that the team ever goes on and it's it's a fortress with only two entrances the front door and the back door with the excuse of being the garage parking but it's like it was this really good story that was sitting there that that could have been used and i just feel like that you know you could do some more events that were like that where it's like oh this is the mission this is what's going on like the reason that we went to go find out about nomad and kaiz it's like oh we went to their training facility that's in the mountains they're adding them to the team yeah so it was like there's reasons behind their their bios and i would like to see more lore be built into like game missions i didn't like need quests. more lore for outbreak i thought it was it was awesome the way it was i thought that I mean, was good like they they did good for what it was i just questioned it because i thought it was weird i thought like, it would have been like true. a really it was, good it was really different oh, than yeah. the core gameplay of Rainbow and Fox. i think that's what made it great in a sense was because it was so different and it made this huge change to everyone that they were like yeah. wow this is this is like this is pretty well done and then it was just like we didn't get to see more because it was like episode one where's episode two yeah three yeah yeah i mean the the thing about lore in siege is that it can either be great or you can end up with lion you know yeah or we could end up with lion yes it's you know that's that's it though i gotta i'm cutting you off cutting you off topic's over we have power rankings to go into yeah it's power rankings time starting with matt misters Oh lord, this is this is this is horrible. Why do you guys do this to me? I'm literally just gonna list the names and then I'm gonna give a quick explanation. So top of the list, uh, University of Central Florida, uh, Iowa, or no Ohio, then followed by Iowa State. Then I got San Diego, and then I got Akron. Finally said it right. Um, <laughs> I so I'll I'll go from the bottom up. So Akron, I just like I I. I I love how they play. And it's it's a it's a story you're going to hear again from these these teams. I love watching these higher teams play and I I have just like this gut feeling that when I see a team communicate and make these amazing plays together where they shouldn't be doing well in like a lower tier and you see them doing well in this higher tier, it's like wow, that was that was I have to go back and watch that. And I feel the same thing when it got like for San Diego. Like I watched them play and the only reason I have them lower is is just because of my other teams. Two teams, is just, my other three are just like a little bit higher up there. But San Diego, like again, a really good team. I love watching them play. I love casting them. There's so much to go on there. Like it's it's my favorite thing to do now. And I didn't really think I would enjoy it that much, but I enjoy it now. Um, and so I put Iowa third, and I know I seven wants to. Would love to say something about it, but I'm not gonna let him right now, because he has his own. But uh, I literally was just watching them play a match, and I was like, "Oh, well, that they just destroyed." But then again, they were playing a lower tier match, and I feel like that can also throw off my listing, which, and that will be explained later. But uh, I love, I love like seeing good teams play. It's like the reason I picked Ohio and the Central Florida. I've seen like the only one up here that I haven't seen played is Ohio. I've seen all the other teams on this list play for. And I love every last one of them. And Central Florida is at the top because I've seen them play and I've seen them dominate and destroy teams. And it's just, it's a pleasure to see a team do well. But I also would love to see more games where it's like, this is a really tough match. But then again, it's just like, ooh, that's a really good team. So Yeah, it's hard to find a good match for the top teams on the table. It's hard to find. Yeah. Because then you either, either you throw them at each other and you make them face each other like hardcore and destroy each other. Um, for example, um, if you've ever seen like a Dota tournament match bracket where you have your high tier teams where the, the after group stage, that's where they fight to the death and they drop to lower bracket and the lower bracket can face it off against the teams who've lost. And they start with their working their way up and it's, it allows you to make a recovery if you lose in the upper tier and then get up so it's there's some games where it's one-sided but there's most of those games are just like hardcore to the death there is no one clear victor and i love a game like that oh just, yeah just from a caster standpoint so ucsd houston that was a yeah barn burner oh my god 
Dude, and... I, I wanted to put Houston up here. I wanted to put Texas AM, AMM. I just like, there's so many teams I want to put up here, but it's like, I'm limited to my five. And I just, yeah, I don't want to go more than that. And I don't want to be like, these two teams are tied. And this is where I think, no, I want to say that these are just great teams. Like, it's really hard to make a ranking like this. And I, I think that you guys are going to say the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree that, like, I wanted to put Texas A&M on mine as well. I'll get into that in more detail. But the the one that stands out is Houston for me. Like, Houston is a team that I really want to put up there. I don't think they have the stats. I don't think they yeah, have the stats no. to put them in there. It's, like... You look at the points, and you look at the round differential, and you're like, okay, yeah. But then you have to look at, like, who they're facing. And that's I, – I think that it's, more or less can go to a lot of teams right now. Like, yeah, I think who they're facing. That. I'll talk about that. Houston and my league. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we're ready for that one. You will you will get back to that. Um, yeah. So I, I think I, I – that's all I have to say. I think I'll, I'll cut it even short just to let I7 go ahead so we have more time to talk about all this yeah, stuff. That's cheating can't do that i i kind of i kind of want to cheat just a little bit just because there's so much information we're really good at going day. over time and i'm really bad at cutting people off in so in an appropriate way i don't know how to do that very well but um, i i more or less i just i can't i can't say enough and i don't have enough words to put it out there and say how much i just i love like seeing these upper teams play i would just wish i could see more like that's all that's all I care about as a caster. I want to see more of these teams play so I can have more of a better idea of who's really doing well. I'll get a timer. I'll start a timer for I7 and we'll see if I can cut them off in a nice and polite Oh, you're going to you're going to keep oh, me you're going to keep We're, we're going to time him. All right. All right. All right. Let's just know how he's going to fact talk. check my timer. All you right. know how much he loves to talk. All right. You all know right. what? You ready? You ready? It's yeah, his. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. It's, when you say he goes so okay, ready to go. Uh, my number five is actually Iowa State University. Um, so this is a team that for a long time we've put like just outside of the top five, not because of their performance. Their performance has been pretty much impeccable. Like they they've not stumbled against anybody. The problem is that they haven't played anybody particularly good. Um, that you I actually wild. Yeah, I actually um, I wasn't satisfied with doing a top five. I actually ranked through twenty five this week. Um, I feel like we all wanted to do that. Iowa somewhat, State, but we didn't want to take that on. Iowa State's entire schedule includes zero teams on my top twenty five. They don't play anybody in the top quarter of the league. They have, I think, three teams that they've played already that are solidly in the top half, um, and one more that's right about at the, the halfway mark, about an average team in the league. Um, and, and they've had no troubles with them. They've you know cruised through those matches. Um, they've got a huge round differential, second highest in the league, only behind UCF. Um, so like Iowa State has plenty of good results, but not against high enough teams to be super confident that they are in the top three teams in the league, but I am very confident that they're in the top five. Um, follow that up with number four is UCSD. Um, they were number four for me in week five. They stay there after week seven. Um, and that's, again, because of, you know, they've had stellar results. Um, they are in arguably um, a just below average group, I believe, um, so, you know, it's hard to say anything terrible about UCSD other than that they dropped a map to Houston, who, again, I'll say, I don't think Houston, I think I have them ranked number eight or something like that right now. Um, so a another very good team, but not a top five team and dropping a map to them makes it hard to say that they're, you know, you know, one or yeah. two team in the league. I think four is... A reasonable spot for UCSD. Um, number three, I have uh, University of British Columbia. That's a team that is hard for me to judge. Really, I I have spent I a lot them. of time poring over their stats because there there's a couple things that make me go, "Wow, British Columbia is like the best team in the league," and then there's a couple things that make me go. 
I'm not so sure about that. And and specifically, they had forfeit wins in weeks five and six. So they actually have uh, 28 rounds on their differential were not ever played. They were just given to them in forfeit wins. Um, and so that's like that's a major drawback, or at least it would be if by the time they had gotten to those matches, we actually knew enough about how they were playing and and how they were matching up against some even better teams and they were heavily favored in the matches that they got forfeit wind in so like even if they got you know 28 rounds for free they probably would have picked up at least 20 round differential between those two matches so Mm -hmm. i don't think that was a huge deal i put ubc um as my number three and then i gotta speed up because i want to give you guys some time to respond to this but number two is ohio state university Knocked down from the number one spot last time we did rankings. Um, and, you know, that's actually not really the fault of Ohio State at all. They were, I want to say, top five teams at the end of regular season in season number one. Um, that's off the top of my head, so it might be wrong. But they had a very strong top-of-the-table team um, in season number one. Most of their roster returned. They stayed just as strong. Um Ohio State, you know, plenty of coordination with the players sticking together, um, and they've got some really good results, really good statistics in a pretty good group. Um, they remain seven and zero, and zero um, undefeated on any map. Um, and so is the number one team, University of Central Florida. Um, their round differential is insane. Um, they are. Like, last time we did rankings, they were, like, two or three rounds in round differential ahead of the next best. Now they're 12 ahead. Like, they mm-hmm. they are accelerating through the end of the season. Um, haven't dropped a map. They've got, I think, it's plus 81 rounds. Um, it's insane. So, UCF right now, top team in the league. All right. You finished with a minute to spare. So, we can talk. I'll, I agree with that list, honestly. It's, it's oh, yeah. not super different than mine. There's just one team that's different, but for the most part, it's pretty similar. And with that, I think I'll start with, with my rankings. Well, hey, yeah, we got we got 35 oh, right, seconds. Right. I don't want to waste them. 35 seconds. Hey, 35 seconds. All right. Thir- 35 All right. Seconds. All right. I'll, I'll go I'll, ahead and I'll chew yeah, up a go, little go, bit. Go. Wait, wait. I want to I want to give like shout outs if we got time. I, oh yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Go ahead. The, the teams that I was very close to putting in here, like at different drafts of my list, I had Akron in there. I had um. Uh, Texas A&M in there. Both of those teams are very, very close um, to being in the top five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I agree. I mean, we were saying that earlier. So yeah. definitely some really good teams that we still can't mention because there's just a lot of five. Good teams. Yeah, there's a lot of good teams on paper. Yep. So it was really difficult for me to do my top five because you're looking through all these guys and you don't see. It's hard to quantify how good these teams really are until they actually play each other. But for now, I we feel like you're top our best. five has like basically the few teams that I wanted to add to mine but I didn't but it also <laughs> I, still has like the three main ones that I couldn't remove from mine to do I it. went with a few hot takes just for the sake of content so but I, Sweet I think content well, give me the content well they're well reasoned and so I got Iowa State same as I7 I got a number five a great team there's just doubts you know like you never really know how a team like Iowa State since they basically haven't been tested fully yet uh I can't put them in the top. I want to because they look really good. They got two of the best players in the league, you know, Bender and Shatter. You know, those guys are monsters. So, but still, they haven't really. There's been a lot of forfeits. I think I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, but... No, they haven't. Well, oh, they haven't. actually, we were we were just all three of oh, us were right. watching yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the yeah. Iowa State match as they're playing um, mm-hmm. right now, and they they won the eight. first map solidly enough that their opponent forfeited the second map so, there so you go. That's, that's the only forfeit dominant. win they have is the other team that's didn't want to play them anymore <laughs> they dominate yeah. and demoralize the other team but still you know five out of the crazy like 90 teams there are in this league it's wild and i think it's really good uh, my number four is actually houston uh, and i have houston there just because they've been performing in a league that's not like it's kind of the same thing with iowa state They've proven themselves against really good teams like UCSD, but they haven't been in the greatest of divisions. But even then, it's not as bad of a division as Iowa State. 
but they've just proven themselves in situations. Like, they got really clutch players like Jesus, you know. Uh, but that game against UCSD at the beginning of the season, one of the best CR6 games I've ever seen, going to be honest. Hell and yeah, hell I yeah. think they have that hungriness, especially come playoff time since they got upset last year. They're going to have the hungriness. They're going to want to get revenge. They're going to want to take it all this year. And I could, that's why I have them number four. No California semifinals. <laughs> yeah. That's what so. I'm hearing, right? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> I mean, look. XPR's dream? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. Yeah. To continue with your list before we continue our <laughs> discussion. Number three is UCF. You, it, it's just hard to to say anything bad about their team, except maybe yeah. their division. But, again, their division is better than the division that Iowa State is in, you know? So, I really – I see them going places. They're a new team, I'm pretty sure. Uh, they got some – they got star players like Cool Hen Luke uh, – it's really – that's why – you can't put them anywhere – if you put them anywhere lower than the top three, I feel like you're just – you're 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 kidding yourself. Yeah. You, like, you can't. You don't I mean, you saw it with, with us. We had it top ones, and you have it top three, and it's just like yeah. – you can't. You can't and, get rid of them. And I have them top three, not because I don't think they're the, – for me, really, my top three are about the same, I feel like, in skill level. It really came down to – how I felt these teams would do going on later in the season. Your gut. Okay. My gut. My gut feeling. So yeah. number two is Ohio State. Uh, it was really a big toss-up between Ohio State and uh, my number one team, who we'll find out later. Uh, <laughs> you probably already know I, I referenced it already. But uh, the thing about Ohio State is they got a consistent roster of all five guys who can just gun. All five of their players, like, you can't find a weakness. And when one of their guys has a bad day there's always another person to come pick up the slack and so i it, yeah. it's they're just they're just total talent all across the board and uh good team but work. they're not as good in my opinion as my number one team which is actually university of british columbia which might be a bit of a hot take that's a little bit reasons. yeah yeah i have my reasons and my reasons are is that they are undefeated in the number one division in the all of CR6. And they're not it's not just the hardest division in all of CR6. It's the hardest division by a mile. By almost like 70 round different differential like out of out of division play. These guys uh they're they're beating some of the best teams. They're beating Arizona, they're beating Arizona State. They drew against, you know, CSULB, you know. I feel like these guys they're they're new. Not a lot of people know about them. I feel like they could be a dark horse come playoffs, but I have them number one just because of how difficult their division is and how well they've been doing inside that division, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's worth noting. Like we'll, we'll get to that in our next topic. Our next topic is the power of divisions. Um, but, yeah, their, their group is nuts. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. By and, far. It's wild. And, yeah, I mean, being on top of that is a big deal. Um, I think, I guess – to to take it back actually to Houston, you're number four. Oh, yeah. I think my biggest problem with Houston and the reason they don't make my top five is I think that they play up to their opponents or they play down to their opponents. If they're if they're playing somebody like UCSD, their level climbs to meet them. Like they're they're not gonna fall behind. But when they play the easier teams, they they, they, they come down. Yeah, they relax, and they don't smash the teams that they should be smashing. Their games are too close all the time. At the top, it's it's for a good reason that they're not allowing themselves to fall behind ever, but they never, like, keep the pedal to the floor when they should be way ahead. For yeah, me, they're I'm all... kind of viewing it the opposite way you are in that regard. It's because I feel like if they since they do play to their opponents, their ceiling is – as high as the ceiling is the next best team in the league. I mean, yeah. their ceiling could be as high as, you know, Ohio State. We don't know. They haven't yeah, really been that's true. truly tested. And they're still undefeated, you know? Like, they're still undefeated. They might be having these close games with teams that they should be blowing out. But at the end of the day, they're getting it done. Yeah, that's you – know? we got we to gotta move on to group power rankings now. I got Sorry, i got to cut you off. Um, and also, Perfect. I do – I do kind of want to note, you, um, you've said a couple times undefeated, and it's true, uh, but for two of the teams that you've mentioned it for, um, they're not undefeated in maps. They're undefeated in matches. Um, okay. And so, yeah, a couple, there, there are only three teams that have um, seven wins, zero losses, zero ties. Yeah. 
Um, By undefeated, I was I was yeah, talking about no defeats. Yeah, it's yeah. it's definitely correct. But um, j- I just want to make sure because I always use undefeated for the seven zero zero. I don't want anybody <clears throat> trying to call you out. Yeah, I wasn't talking because, about math. I was talking about yeah. games. Yeah, and Lord, so let's talking about group power rankings, dude. This is we talked about this when we when we first looked at it the very first time. It was, that was week three, four, right? Uh, we were looking at it. It was after week five, I believe. It was. I don't know. Yeah, no, we yeah, so we were same time. It was sometime. Rankings. Yeah, it was sometime about halfway through, and yes. we were looking at this, and we were like, man, groups facing off against each other really shows like so, the unbalance sometimes in some of these groups. Because mm-hmm. of course, you know, this is Division One. You expect all the teams to be giving in their all, and sometimes. They're all just in either enough or it's just not there. And it's very it's very clear with a lot of these groups. Like you're seeing groups where their their round differential outside of the group is really small, but inside the group it's really insane. Other and maybe it's the other way around for some other groups. And it's it's really hard to say if it's if it's the teams or if it's just how the groups are set right now. Yeah, and it's it's insane. So that's yeah. what I was referring to. Yeah, Go sorry ahead. to cut you off. But that's <laughs> what I was referring to in a lot of my rankings. Like, if you look at this in your out of division round differential, the division that University of British Columbia is in, which is Lion Two, has a plus a hundred and four. Yeah, outside like yeah. rounds yeah. out. That's only against side differential. Outside. Only against that's other like groups, they have a plus one hundred and four round so differential. That to put that Wait, in thirty four. Points the next up. best team has plus 26. That's yeah, how the next best group. Is. The next best group has next plus best 26. Group. That's Falcon 1 yeah. at 26 points. And, and so it's for or... Iowa State, the reason why I put them fifth is that yep. their group is statistically the worst out of division. You know, they're negative 76 round differential. They've only won two games out of division this entire And guess year. who did those? Guess guess who won those yeah. maps? Uh, yeah, that was and it's Iowa, State. Iowa State. So and so, and so that kind of tells you, like you were saying, that the teams in that division are pretty are pretty not up to par, because you see, there's one tie and there's ten losses. Ten losses. Again, that's, that's a lot. This doesn't mean that the teams are good or better in the harder divisions or worse in the worst divisions. It just it's means just like kind of it helps highlight some things about yeah. these, and it's it's hard to say whether it's it's actually something to note too great of or just like kind of push aside i would have yeah. to say it's really hard to do mm-hmm. definitely yeah, yeah like i, I think no, that well, all like like all the out of group stats that we've pulled together here the the win tie loss ratios um mm-hmm. the the points gained which is basically just from the in group ties loss. i think and that's then, the biggest one there yeah that's well that's going to come up that's even our next topic. Is that that's why that's on that chart, and then this is hopefully something that we've got on screen for you guys right now, um, because there's a lot of info that we're not gonna be able to say out loud in this amount of time. But some juicy um, stuff here. Yeah. So I like I think of the out of group stuff as being like the the average, like the center of mass of each group, mm-hmm. and then. When you look at stuff within the group, then you see the spread of it and, like, how far to each extreme. Because if you've got, like, the whole group that's equally talented right in the middle, that's a tiny spread. Or you could have Iowa State and everybody but Iowa State. <laughs> and and that, you know, that group, the, the average is going to be in the middle, but it's because there are teams pulling it really far in both directions. Whereas some groups are really just, like, really condensed at all around that average point yeah. um so yeah okay a couple outliers just at the end here um so like we already mentioned falcon 2 um iowa state's group uh seven points out of their group not so hot um but lion 2 on the other end again we've already said it but 34 points is insane the next highest point total from anybody is 21 so like more than 50 percent better than every other group it's insane um yeah and there's even three groups that are all tied at 20 yeah those oh. those groups are all like just slightly above average that's that's a good a good point to look at like if you're above 20 i would tell you i, I would say 
like 19 and a half is the average point. So if you're yeah. above that or below that. Um, but yeah, the yeah, only thing you is... need to know about how strong Lion 2 is is that University of Arizona is currently last in that division. Like, that should tell yeah. you all you need to know. I, I, think, I, think, um, I think it's crazy that before the season began, there were a lot of people going, Lion 1 is going to be insane. Lion 3 is going to be insane. It's Lion 2 that's actually insane. Like, I think that... it's It's been the most insane for at least their outer group stuff. And then their yeah. in-group stuff, you see there's there's some ties in there, and their points is just insane. It's There's so much to look at statistically with all these different groups. And I, I think it's I think it will help make next season even better knowing this stuff going into it. Absolutely. I yeah. feel like that makes it a really good thing to look at. And honestly, yeah, it's... I mean, it's, I, I mean, I have to say it's, you know, it's a beginning almost league. It's only our second season to be going into our third season really soon, really close. I feel to have all this information, it makes the tournament better and it makes it better and better each time we go for another season. And even so, then, I gotta give it to the stat, to the tournament staff, because oh, most yeah. of these divisions, besides the outliers, most of these divisions are pretty close. You know, oh, yeah, really and great. there's a lot of them that are, you know, they're well into the double digits. They're close to 20 as possible. And then there's a few outliers where they're over or they're under, like extremely. Yeah. And there's That's some really just, good playoffs. It's players. hard to really do those matches and balance them. Yeah. There's some really so, good playoff races going on right now. We can't talk about those because we don't have the time. But like, yeah, still, that, uh, that's, see some that's gonna be a whole nother topic. Yeah, I wanna, that's gonna be a whole nother. Thing. When the season ends, I think write this down, somebody. <laughs> We're gonna talk about the best team to not make playoffs because somebody's oh, yeah. gonna be really upset. They're gonna oh, be yeah. some very we'll, close. We'll have races. we'll have the the people who we thought were dark horses who didn't make it. Yeah. Oh yeah, and th that that will be like the underdog who who never made it in, and then we'll talk about like maybe there'll be like a few underdogs that saw. So there. There is some lots of information to be talked about, but that is for after the finals. That is for like, or even at the semifinals. Like that's that's it's where we'll start talking about it. It's not right now. It's too early. It's yeah. too early for that. Too it's early. not finals yet. Literally, I, I, I'm not, I don't have my dance <laughs> rods out yet. Which was after finals. That'd be nice. Yeah. So, so. something I I do want to talk about a little bit is regarding the spread of these groups. Um, and like you know how close it is within the groups, um, mm -hmm. I think that it, it's worth talking about. Like I don't have an answer for this, but I, it's worth talking about the different problems that that presents when you're trying to rank these teams against one another. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, like the, there's no group that makes you go, "Oh yeah, I know exactly how good each of the teams in here are." Like, oh yeah, there's there's different types of subjectivity for the different types of groups so like the more spread there is in a group like with iowa state that's where we can say you know iowa state's performing excellently in their matches and they can only play the games that they're given but how can we be sure that when they play better teams they'll have just as good results we can't be sure of that but on the other end of the spectrum you can take a, a group like Viper 2 is crazy to me because 14 ties within their group. Like, they're, oh, when yeah. they play each other, they don't win. They just split maps, like, every time. It's nuts. Um, it tells so, you it's a really balanced group or it's not. It's really hard. So, well, that's exactly it. Is it. It's balanced, but where is it balanced? Because if you've got a lot of really good teams together they're going to keep trading maps if yeah, you've got a lot of bad teams on the together level. they're going to keep trading maps so they could be and, the, and that may explain why the out of out of uh out of bracket the other group um right. rounds are really low because i mean they're looking at negative 29 there and it's it's hard to really say that you know they're doing really well or they're doing really bad based on that you yeah, have to that's that's where like getting the games casted really gets to show like what teams are really doing good because then you get to physically see the skill in a round. It's not just numbers on a page. Exactly. I mean, we're trying our darndest here <laughs> to say that this is a good team. And I mean, like going back to when I did my my power grade games, I 
four of those teams I have watched. I physically have watched them play, and I understand that that's why I chose them. And one of them was purely just based on stats and what I've been hearing from other people. And, and I'd be willing I to feel bet like the one with stats, that's the one you're least confident in, isn't it? It is. It's the least confident in. And, I mean, we're talking about their group, and it's, it's, it's Ohio. That's the one I haven't seen. And in their group, they only have four ties, and they've lost 34 outside of it. It's kind of, like, really That's, hard to say. Yeah, and, like, honestly, if you took any of the teams that I ranked in my top five and told me one of them beat the other, I wouldn't be surprised. Right. Honestly. Yeah. Because yeah. with the top five, you, can, you, you can't go off anything other than the amount of the amount you've been exposed to it. I mean, that depends yeah. on a person, and that de- also depends on how much they've been casted, how much they've, what their stats say, you know? If their stats are actually, you know, written down at the moment, you know, because you never really know. But I could, it's just really a toss-up. And that's why I'm super, super excited for the playoffs. I am so excited. Oh, yeah. To see playoffs, the I feel, is, like, the best moment to really see the teams that are that did really well in their groups and then to see the teams that that scrape by and maybe even will shine in playoffs because that can happen there there will be people who will be dethroned from being really good like just our really top good. fives might just get completely destroyed just obliterated in, in the round of 32 and it's yeah. just really good because there's so many good players and good teams in this league that we get to have this kind of like hype for the competition between them you know i mean oh I, yeah so cool the hype videos Ooh, yeah the hype ready. videos I'm ready. Give me <laughs> fix. I'm sorry. Well, it's too early. I'm yeah, sorry. That's that's the end of that segment as well. That's all six of our topics. I do want to give a shout out um, to Iowa State University. I finally got a chance to like talk them up. I've been getting flamed um, in our in our Discord <laughs> for so long for not saying good things about Iowa State. Um, but they are the first team to secure a national playoff spot. They go get to skip quick. that divisional round. Um, and they're the first to lock it in. So congratulations to Iowa State for that. Um, and that's going to be it for 6x6 six six this week. We um, This one flew by, for sure. Yeah. Um, that one actually felt like it went by easier we than just started every single this. one of them. We just yeah. started like, this episode. Um, <laughs> oh, Lord. But uh, if you want to see something different, uh, if you want to see someone different on the show in a later week, uh, make sure you tweet at us at 6 by 6 podcast. Um, let us know what you want to see. Um, let us know your topics, your peoples, and really, if you want to see anything new. Like, mm-hmm. that's what we have it there for. We want to have your input because that, we're trying to help give that information to you guys. And we if you want to get some feedback. information, yeah. yes, yeah. feedback is our life. So exactly. we can't keep on making up all these topics because we're, we're running out of ideas. Please help one. <laughs> We have some set aside, but we still need more. We would we love to have but more. Yeah, we want and and to some extent we need some more. Yeah. So even if it's a little bit of a meme, we'll take it. It's okay. We'll take it. Even I mean, we have Matt on the show. We're okay with. Matt. I mean, you really do have <laughs> me on the show. I I'm probably like the the comic relief here, so I I, I I'm happy with being titled that. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to wrap it up. That's going to be it from us. Um, Thanks for watching, guys. Super happy to have you with us, and we'll see you next time.